Christianity is about hope. It's hope that gets me up in the mornings. When I don't have hope, I don't have motivation. Someone one time said that you cannot be a pessimist and be a Christian. I believe that. We cannot be a pessimist and be a Christian. We cannot be depressed and be a Christian. Because Paul says hope is going to last. I want to go back into the Old Testament for a moment. The book of Jeremiah. Oh, if there was ever a man, Jeremiah is often referred to as the weeping prophet because he was so upset about the injustices of the society in which he lived. He was so upset and concerned about the judgment of God that he wept. But in Jeremiah chapter 29 and in verse 11, Jeremiah says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Did you know that? God has plans for you. God had plans for me. I, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil. Some of your translations will say for good and not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you shall seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. And I will restore your fortunes and gather you from the nations and place in all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. Now, in the context, Jeremiah is writing this as God is speaking to the Israelite people. But, here's what we sometimes maybe need to do. I want you to think of this as you read it as if God is speaking to you personally. Because he is. The things that were written aforetime were written for our learning so that we through patience of the scriptures might have hope. If we go back a little bit farther into the book of Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah talks about hope. Again, Isaiah is prophesying of doom and gloom. But with every prophecy of destruction, of every prophecy of discipline, there comes the prophecy of hope and restoration. The Bible is built on hope. The Bible is built on restoration. Isaiah chapter 40 and in verse 31. Isaiah says, But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Now, these are passages that I did not necessarily know all existed. These are passages that I have discovered in my walk with Christ. These are passages that uh, as I was seeking truth, gave me the encouragement to solidify my faith. They gave me the encouragement that I needed in order to actually become a child of God. Look at what Paul says in Philippians chapter 1. In Philippians chapter 1 and in verse 6, here the Apostle Paul says, and I am sure of this, he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. You should think about that. Everyone here this morning, you're here. You're here, kids, because God has begun a good work in you. You're at the beginning. I have confidence 
that God began a good work in you and he is going to complete that good work in your lives. I promise you he will. Here's another aspect about Christianity. Christianity is about forgiveness. It's about forgiving others. But for me, more importantly, it was about realizing that all of the evil things, and I was just like anybody else. I was just like every other teenager. I did things that were wrong. I did things that I regret. Christianity was about forgiveness. Realizing that the evil things that I had done were just as if they no longer existed. We'll look at a few passages. I may cut some of these short because of time's sake. So I'm going to go to Ephesians. In Paul's letter to the Ephesian Christians. Paul writes about forgiveness in Ephesians chapter 4 and in verse 31. <clears throat> Paul says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger <clears throat> and clamor and slander be put away from among you with all malice. Be kind one, be kind one to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. And over in Romans chapter 6. So this is interaction with our fellow uh, human beings, specifically our fellow Christians. But over in Romans chapter 6, and in verse 5, the whole sixth chapter of the book of Romans is the new beginning. The new beginning for a Christian, what it means to be to start fresh. In Romans chapter 6 and verse 5, Paul says, For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. It's about a new beginning. Forgiveness. It's about eternity. We have all experienced death. Every one of us has experienced the death of someone close to us. The Hebrew writer says it is appointed unto man once to die. It's an appointment that like it or hate it, one of these days we will personally experience. Christianity offers us hope after death. And if the Bible is correct, and if nature is correct, if there is a creator of the world, and that creator of the world matches the God of the Bible, then we have hope of eternity. We have hope of life after death. Now, when I was a teenager, this really didn't appeal a whole lot to me. I didn't think that. You know, when you're a teenager, you're pretty much invincible. When you're a young person, you don't think about death. Although I have to say, I went to a lot of funerals. My grandfather was one of 13 children. And over the years, I've been to almost, I think, I think we've got two left out of 13. And I went, to, I went to all their funerals. I went to all their spouses' funerals. I went to funerals for my mom's cousins. I went to funerals for my dad's aunts and uncles as well. And my dad's cousins. Death is a part of life. But 
the Bible offers us, while we're in Romans chapter 6, let's think about what the Bible offers us. Not only does it offer us, not only does Christianity offer us the forgiveness of our imperfections, the forgiveness of our sins, the forgiveness of our wrongs, not only does it offer that and a new start, but in verse 12, that new start doesn't just lead to a better physical life. That new start leads to eternal life. Paul says, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body to make you obey its passions. Do not present your members <clears throat> to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourself to God as those who have been bought brought from death to life and your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under the law, but under grace. Now, turn with me to Revelations. One of the greatest depictions in, Re in the book of Revelations, I think, is found in Revelation chapter 21. The very end of this book is a passage that should give us all encouragement Revelation 21, and in verse 1, John says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth were passed away. <clears throat> and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away. And this, this is what has got me for years, is verse 4. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning or crying nor pain anymore. For the former things have passed away. 